do you know why you are paying more for oil mm. edible oil do you know why you are paying more for this mm. why have the costs of certain things gone up this is why so this has to be understood so nato has to back off russia also has to back off both will have to back off the question is who's going to blink we don't have a hindu nation yes our hindus are not threatened about their existence mm. those who burn books should they be our ideal or the, and that station is still called bakhti arpur it's still called imagine Bakhtiar. and we don't even bother about it welcome to the abhijit chawla podcast my guest today is anand narsimhan he is a managing editor and anchor at news 18 network and he is one of india's most prominent journalists please subscribe and enjoy the conversation Anand Narsimhan, welcome to the podcast. It's so lovely to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Abhijit. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot. I've actually been following your career for since it, be since it began. I think you first were a sports journalist, weren't yes. you? And I've seen your trajectory all, all the way. So it's wonderful to have you on. Well, I sometimes look back at my own trajectory and I can't believe that this is the road I had come. So right. uh, sometimes you're destined to be part of a dream job and that dream job journey continues, you see. Yep, indeed. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to carry on the conversation we had a few days back mm -hmm. uh, about the role of media in narrative building in, in geopolitics. Media and geopolitics, there's a significant intersection. And uh, every nation has a media that sets a narrative for the nation. For example, the, the, the UK has the BBC, the US has CNN and all, Fox News and whatnot. The Chinese have their thing. Everyone has that. We don't have it. Why is it that we don't have uh, um, a narrative that our media builds? Well, this is a question that, uh, you know, uh, time and again, I've been thinking and I've been mm. asking ourselves. And uh, I think it, it's something that we as a nation have never taken seriously about. Mm. Uh, we as a nation soon after our independence uh, were had a thought where it said that why do we even need an army? Who's going to attack us? <laughs> so let's shut down all the ordinance factories. So let's not have anything. Nobody's going to take anything from us. We've just got our one hour freedom and we are not fighting with anybody. So why would anybody? And uh, within the first two decades itself, we were saddled with uh, two wars, three wars. Uh, and we had uh, attacks on a two front attack. So yes. we had to cede huge parts of our country as Aksai Chin. Uh, we saw 62 upon us and the ghosts of 62. And then we had to pay the brunt of 65. Mm. And at all points in time, all that entire thought process, which said that let's just focus on inward and let's just be closed, uh, didn't allow us to set forth a story, uh, a narrative for Bharat, a platform that will talk about that will do uh, what I would say is Bharat ki baat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, story of Bharat. Mm -hmm. That's also because uh, we decided to ape and try and be what we weren't. Uh, the founding fathers in our constituent assembly uh, debates, if you were to peruse that, uh, they were two different factions. One faction that said that this is Bharat mm -hmm. and this is not India. Uh, the other faction, they said, oh, this is India, but uh, it is Bharat. So we have to ape the West. We, we couldn't shed our colonial mindset, which made us feel that our knowledge systems were inferior, our story was inferior. Um, the, the story of the lion, you know, the, it was always the hunter and you, it's like the lion is looking up to the hunter and saying, okay, I'll live your way. That's not something that, that, that should have been. Yes. And sadly, what it did was, we never set up to build our story. And even when we wanted to build our story, we had Durdarshan, we brought the Prasar Bharti Act. Uh, the Durdarshan was only communicating what is happening within. Yes. And it was trying to be a window to the world for the uh, Bharatiya, mm. but it was not a window into Bharat for the world. Yes. That thought process and that mechanism, Abhijit, was never there. Mm. And even today, it's so sad. That we have so many media houses and I'm part of one which is doing fantastically. But the orientation to say it as it is. This mm. is my point of view. Yes. It's it's our media. It's our point of view. That has not happened. Unless and, and frankly, unless we amend the Prasar Bharti Act and we really corporatize it mm -hmm. rather than, you know, uh, it's totally sarkarified right now. Okay. If I may use that term. Uh -huh. um, we will not be able to become a platform or evolve a platform that actually is a window to the world. It's uh, into Bharat. Mm. We will not be able to. Today, Durdarshan is not even a window of Bharat to the Bharatiya. That's true. How are we expecting it to become a window to the world into Bharat? Mm. So those are things which are 
uh, sad but true and if we want to be a nation who we vision envision to be as prime minister narendra modi said by 2047 a viksit bharat mm-hmm. a developed country which is not only found its place but it's we need to do that yes. we need to create it who's going to bell the cat mm. that's another big question so what is the prasar bharati act and what what are the issues with it see uh, there are may- various aspects now uh, time and again what you would want to do is you would want to get somebody from the private media industry to try and corporatize it to try and uh, build it but then they come only on a contract basis they cannot be part of the uh, you know this is i'm just saying loosely le- telling you uh, it's it does not allow somebody on a contract to take decisions mm-hmm. so somebody who's on a government job is the one who will take decisions uh, largely it is uh, ias officers and bureaucrats who are running it mm-hmm. not journalists mm-hmm. journalists who are running it don't want to do anything about it because i've got a sarkari nokri i've got a salary why do i need to do a uh, much and why do i need to really change things mm-hmm. see in terms of infrastructure in terms of equipment in terms of platform it's a phenomenal platform which mm-hmm. reaches the length and breadth of our country but it doesn't reach to the world yes where where is where is the doordarshan story where is doordarshan seen in the us where is doordarshan seen in the african nations where is doordarshan seen in europe where is doordarshan seen in japan or china anywhere else yes but all their platforms have spread their distribution and their networks in, in there are budgets to push that mm. the international wing of the local or the national broadcaster mm-hmm. for most nations have got budgets and are backed by the me mm. we have it i don't think we have something like that we may have platform but we may have done it should put there is no focused thought process there's no vision some, somewhere there may be a vision but is there uh, um, so le- let's say that people want to do things mm-hmm. but there has to be a lot that needs to change of course now the moment i change i talk about changing the prasar bharati ah. act Uh, it's it's again a tinder box isn't mm. it and mm. then how do i change the mindset mentality of people because this is what was taught to us get a government job and you're set for life that's it whether you perform or you don't perform you will not perish yes because nobody can sack you mm-hmm. so at the most you may get suspended for some time but you're not going to get sacked mm. it's not corporatized uh, performance is not not that there aren't good people there but point is it's sarkari mm-hmm. now i don't want the mouthpiece or the window into bharat to be a uh, quote and quote in the uh, you know colonial term sarkari mm-hmm. today sarkar is a different dynamic altogether It under is. under pm narendra modi there is yes. a different functioning altogether different dimension to sarkari mm-hmm. it's far more corporatized mm-hmm. and far more busier there is so much more action that's happening yes. but that has to translate into this mm-hmm. now the challenge is uh, now you would say why not private media Yeah, why not private? Why media? not private? Yes. Why, why can't private media be a window uh, mm-hmm. into Bharat? Yes. Of course, it can. Mm-hmm. But then private media will again have its own compulsions. It will have its own uh, challenges. Mm-hmm. There has to be a public-private partnership mm-hmm. where, irrespective of governments, irrespective of which end of the political spectrum eventually gets to power, one fact has to be that this platform will only talk. what is bharat's agenda and which will only highlight and attract the world towards bharat yes hamare ghar ki baat aapas mein hai na main aur aap ladai karenge apne ghar ke andar rakhenge main hum to bhai hai baap ghar ke andar bahar ko hum kya dikhayenge itna khushhal ghar hai fantastic hai everybody you want everybody else to think yaar gosh mere paas bhi aisa kuch hota exactly right yeah we have a problem of washing our dirty linen in public in public and, yes. in public yes and letting people form tell us what opinion to have about us yes that that slowly is changing currently under the current dispensation but i think it will take some more time hmm. as by the time we get there is all news propaganda uh to some extent i mean look at cctv look at the bbc look at cnn look at al jazeera everyone is pushing a certain perspective of the world a certain agenda there is a difference between perspective and there is a difference between perspective and propaganda at mm. least even now i would like to believe that mm. not all news is propaganda but there is a perspective now where i am coming through is not that it becomes a propagandist platform of course there has to be a certain level of propaganda because i want to push what 
we as a nation stand for not yes. as an individual or as an indi- uh, uh, as a prime minister or as a government stand for but we as a nation stand the for. bharatiya perspective the bharatiya perspective yes. so that bharatiya perspective will have a certain level of propaganda but perspective is important mm-hmm. now why are we buying oil from russia who is the who's europe to tell us that we shouldn't buy oil exactly okay when they are uh, you know supplementing nearly 50 to 55% of their energy needs from russians hmm. now should we not explain to the world the economics of it and that we have got uh, you know millions and millions of people in europe and across the world uh, still stable and economy is still stable because we are processing the oil and sending it to them we are finding a via medium and in that way we are also propelling uh, and propping up our own economy and yes. and also allowing ourselves a certain level of energy security what was the price of uh, crude oil or uh, oil you know a liter of petrol or liter of diesel you know before the ukraine war hmm. and what's the price today mm-hmm. in bharat yeah. and compare that with prices in europe prices in america prices anywhere yes it we still almost the same yes. one one and a half rupees difference here and there but mm-hmm. it's uh, it's compared to about 1 dollar difference or 1 and a half euro difference 2 euro difference so the, you know you have to understand that uh, practically yes. that's and that's the reason why we still have a growth story mm-hmm. our biggest import bill is energy yes it is, is oil yes and if we have found a reason why and how to do it and that's also because russia is selling us oil not just because it needs it because it we are friends yes and i think there is something that we need to tell the world that you are sitting on a minuscule size of geographical area and a small population which is does not even uh, you know encompass all of delhi ncr mm-hmm. and we are sitting on for one fourth of the landmass 4% of the landmass but nearly 20% of the world's population yes so on the one hand you say that we are not doing enough to increase their per capita mm. on the other hand you are saying don't buy oil exactly <laughs> there it is my point is why does dr jay shankar have to go globe trotting and explaining to the world why india does what it does why can't the media do that the, i think there is there is a gap there right because if it if it comes to other nations so they have the media putting forth the narrative as to why we have so and so foreign policy or whatever but we clearly lack that we don't have that because, because uh, bharatiya media is not there on those in foreign soil no mm. bharatiya media first has to be watched and present and active on foreign soil and become a potent force so that uh, uh, dr jay shankar does not have to do all the batting alone mm. so you know uh, frankly where is bharatiya media on american soil don't watch uh, it sir uh, where, where is bharatiya media in europe mm. where is bharatiya media in like i said africa nations or in japan or in if some people want to tune into some of our platforms they'll watch but what are they watching mm. are they getting a focused bharatiya perspective they're not clear bharatiya perspective no you and me have may differ politically mm-hmm. you and me you either of us may like or may not like prime minister narendra modi okay but both of us are bharatiya right yes we we should see we should separate our political difference our ideological preference to what bharat is doing mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. to ensure that bharat doesn't reel in uh, oil inflation yes. because of the oil inflation imagine that we had to pay 250 rupees or 300 rupees per liter yes bawal kar jata sadak bilkul bilkul yeah nahi kata hai na mm. is anybody turning around and asking yaar sab jagah to ladaiyan ho rahi hai mm. pura hamare ird gird sab jagah ladai hai phir bhi hamara to tel ka price to stable hai yes. kaise hai kaise hai jabki sabse bada uh, biggest uh, bojh hai hamare upar mm. as a country mm. who's asking that question mm. and because it's not hurting you you're not asking that question mm. and because it's not hurting so that's why this question is not being asked and maybe not aware of what's happening around the world maybe people aren't aware not just aware people seemingly don't care don't care uh, yeah but as long as it doesn't come to hurt them hmm. it, they don't care hmm. and 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 because we are not aware and we don't think want to make others aware they are also not aware so mm-hmm. they will listen to what a cctn or an al jazeera or a bbc or a cnn or anybody else would say about what india is doing mm-hmm. rather than listen to what we you know to bharat has to say about what bharat is doing mm-hmm. are journalists most journalists unaware of what geopolitics is because for example i watched some tv channels covering the ukraine war and they were essentially regurgitating what the western media is saying and there were a couple of channels i'll not name them who had sent journalists to cover the war they were all covering covering one side of the war i mean the ukrainian side 
why not send two here and two there so that you have a balanced perspective? Is there a lack of understanding or is that what what is the reason? See, one is that we've been trained to look at the Western media as the benchmark for TV media journalism or mm -hmm. journalism. Mm -hmm. The West has appropriated that position. They claim to do it the best mm -hmm. and we are supposed to listen to that. Mm -hmm. See, their methods may be very good. Their processes may be very good. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we've got to copy what they say. Exactly. We tend to copy what they say. Mm. And we believe that what they say is gospel or what they say is tathya mm -hmm. and satya. Mm -hmm. And what we say is not tathya and satya. Mm -hmm. It's sad, mm -hmm. but true. Uh, the other aspect is money. Uh, third is uh, a certain level of influence. Uh, thinking that, okay, if we do this and we align ourselves, then we will get called to their media forums and we'll get a certain level of projection. There's that. Uh, all of that mm -hmm. uh, happens. So, and this is endemic and it will take time to change. Mm -hmm. Not that it's not changing, it is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I will not name or speak uh, ill. As principal, I would do not want to do it right. about anybody within our fraternity. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that there are many within the journalistic fraternity who took a very, very balanced point of view, put forth what's happening, why is Russia doing what it's doing, mm -hmm. what's the story. Now, it was journalists only who put out that the various mean, the, the very meaning of the word Ukraine is border area. Ukraine, borderlands. Borderlands. Yes. So, mm -hmm. if you and me know that, mm -hmm. obviously, it's been conveyed to a certain extent, this one. So, there is a history to it. Mm -hmm. But along with the history, the other aspect is that when the Ukrainians allow you and they are watching you, you would only show the Ukraine perspective. <laughs> if the Russians had allowed mm. Bharatiya media to go in, mm -hmm. and the Russians had been facilitating it, the Russian side and what's happening within Russia would have also been said. Mm -hmm. so there, I can be very candid and say that the Russia Russians were not very keen. Oh, I see. The Russians were not very keen on allowing uh, foreign media or international media, especially Bharatiya media mm -hmm. initially. Okay. By the time they did a lot, the water had flown under the bridge. Mm -hmm. But the Russian perspective was listened to in Bharat. Mm -hmm. And you would see that uh, there were people who turned around and said, why is Russia doing what it's doing? And I think there were many voices, not just in Bharat, but across the world who said, okay, Russia and Ukraine are next to each other. Mm -hmm. What is NATO doing halfway around the world on the Ukrainian borders? Yeah. And NATO was created because there was Warsaw. Mm -hmm. Now, Warsaw is no longer there, but NATO still continues to expand. So, who is trying to expand their sphere of influence and hegemony? Mm. Am I saying that whatever the Russians did is right and above board? No, 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 not that. I'm just, it's just another perspective. Uh, tomorrow, if China intrudes into Bharat, what will Bharat do? If China decides that it's going to annex Pakistan, what will Bharat do? Mm. Or if China decides it's going to annex Nepal, what will Bharat do? What do you and me as Bharatiya want Bharat to do? We should respond and, and ensure. Should we, not, should we not ensure that yeah. Nepal is not annexed? Of course. Should we not ensure that our borders remain safe? Mm -hmm. What's the Vipaksh asking in our question? Ah, ah, ah. They never said all of this is the same group of people who said not the blade of grass grows in Aksai Chin. Aksai Chin, yes. Okay, well, so what if they have come a little in its open areas? They can come in as much as we want, they want and we can go in as much as we want. That's mm. how they left it loose, right? Did yes. they define boundaries? Did they say no? There is a treaty of 1842 so, uh, called the Treaty of Chushul. That's the last document where the Chinese uh, agreed to borders. Mm. Let's take that as a base. Have we argued that point of view? No. We've listened to what the Chinese had to say. We said, oh, the Chinese could have come all the way, but they went back. They didn't go back. Mm. They just showed to us and tried to impress upon us that they can walk in any time they want and walk out any time. And we still didn't build border infrastructure. Abhi, Correct, yeah. We still said, wo wo aane hogi unko isale, let's not make. That was the mindset that mm. we had. Yeah. So, if we are, uh, we have to change all of that and all of that is changing over the last 10 years. It is. Jo, not. Jo yeah. saal se ho hai, hmm. usko ab saal mein nahi badal sakte. Of course, it's going to take time. It, yeah. It'll take time. But yeah. from the media point of view, this is what happened. Hmm. That there are those who are very highly influenced and they believe that Videshi media, especially Western media is gold standard. Hmm. They're not. 
they make so many errors hmm. it's the same western media that stood on in, in iraq and claimed that this is where there are weapons of mass destruction and it's the same western media that 10 years or 15 years later came back and said sorry there was nothing like that we didn't find anything <laughs> it's the same western media that said that certain kinds of vaccines are very very good oh yes and and they try to mask mm. the ill effects of those vaccines mm. while playing down the effectivity of uh, you know bhartiya vaccines, bhartiya vaccines. Which, which were which were bail, built on very traditional platforms on which 80% of the world's children are being uh, inoculated yes so it's it's all a game of narratives and money you know and and so that's why i'm saying so how can you say that they are the gold standard they mm. aren't mm. they aren't they may have certain processes which they have, but they are also sitting on huge billions of dollars of budgets yes. which they give we are working on shoestring budgets mm. so but we are still effective mm. we show people how to do it in kam kharch zyada kifayat mein zyada asar you the know mangalyan effect huh? mangalyan isro look at yeah. what we have done you know yeah. they make a hollywood movie for uh, for a cost greater than what it took us to send mangalyan or even uh, chandrayaan mm. so those are things that are our abilities we should be a little proud of them we are till now very sheepish about it mm. what is it about the western media that we can learn from see they have an attention to detail mm. okay they are very sticklers about getting the story mm. and the narrative right mm. okay uh, and they have the ability to convince you uh, and to tell you that your facts are still and question your own very fa- facts see these are abilities which they have mm. and they stand there and back their point of view to the hilt mm-hmm. and especially when it comes to their country of origin versus somebody else yes Mm-hmm. see till then they'll keep bickering about internal dynamics and politics but the face to the world will only show the good part of it and what the overall narrative of that nation is mm-hmm. that i think is some these are three four five things i think we should learn from them mm-hmm. they, they also know how to do scale scale yeah mm-hmm. they know how to do scale we and packaging mm-hmm. we have to learn scale and packaging so scale will come with money right you need to infuse funds into the media yeah. scale will come with money scale mm. will come with a, a a certain level of growing the talent pool and increasing the footprint mm. uh, reaching more doorsteps mm. and and the media doing beyond just you know uh, pushing news and also views views yes yeah that views that's and analysis yeah that's very important mm. and the indian media mainly focuses on domestic politics and domestic issues we typically don't talk about what's happening in let's say latin america or oceania we need to start covering these things as well don't you think yes i do mm. totally and there is a there is a viewer base that wants to know this yes and it's growing mm. why is it that war is doing so well in language medium <laughs> why is it it's not just that it's like a gaming experience that banduke chal rahi hai to pe chal rahi hai mm. people want to know why why two nations are fighting yes what's happening there mm. who are these people why the fight is happening where they want to see action they want to see drama mm-hmm. but they also want to know mm. and and somewhere everybody wants knowledge as long as we make it interesting and we package it well people will watch mm-hmm. so there is this 1% and there is a 99% so mm-hmm. the 1% thinking population that watches a certain kind of media and the 99% or you no know, doing population that wants a certain kind of information but mm-hmm. both want information yes both may want it and consume it differently but both want information hmm. and if we are able to make it interesting why see this is what why is what is happening in say latam hmm. or in the african nations or anywhere else in the world why is it important for me that's the perspective we need to Correct. help them understand the moment we we do that yes then it becomes interesting and it becomes relevant to hmm. do you know why you are paying more for oil mm. edible oil do you mm. know why you're paying more for this mm. why have the costs of certain things gone up yes this is why mm. and this is what that's why what's happening here is relevant yes to your life mm. why is it that you don't have ev charging stations at every nook and corner despite evs coming to our country why mm. is it that evs haven't flooded the market and you still have mm. uh we you need rare earth minerals we are not yes. manufacturing rare earth minerals. that's right we are not making our own batteries mm. and we need rare earth who are the nations which have rare earth and who's controlling those nations today that's the thing yeah, yeah. Mm. so then the story becomes interesting for me yes. as a viewer i think that's something which we need to do more so i think it's about more actively 
it's about storytelling as an art. I mean, you can present news and all these issues in terms of stories and that, that makes things interesting. Mm, yeah. So what can the Indian media do to become a global force? Do we need government inter intervention or do we need the private players to step up and do something better? I, I think it's a combination of both. Mm. Uh, frankly, uh, we need to have a far more corporate national media. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say national media driven by the government, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is a public private partnership, whether it is a public undertaking mm -hmm. where you you list it and it's the people who buy stocks, who fund it mm -hmm. via the stock market. But uh, it has say about 49% government control and 51% uh, open stock market with no other particular shareholder allowed to have more than a 6% stake. Let's mm -hmm. put out the rules as far as what will, and then let it be funded by the people. Mm. We won't tax the people, but we'll tell people to invest in it, mm. buy shares and, and let it grow. So as the footfall, as the advertising, as the business, as the revenue grows and the government will contribute from the taxpayers earnings, a certain money, point of uh, you know money, but that will not be focusing inward, that will be focusing outward. Mm. See, the BBC's international wing comes under the MEA of the BBC. It does, yes. Yeah, it does. And they have a separate budget for it. Mm. That's only for BBC internet, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's something which we can look at mm. uh, when we look at a DD international. Mm. Let's make it a public limited company. Yes. Let people have stake in it mm -hmm. uh, rather than having just government control. Tabi aap bolo na, sarkar badal gayi to phir DD ka story badal gaya, angle badal gaya. Nahi badalega. Focus is Bharatiya people. Mm. The moment you say that the focus is only Bharatiya people, Bharat ki baat. It will never put down the and I think oh, the only thing and you should have a preamble, you should have a constitution mm. and you should very clearly say that nothing that demeans Bharat will go on this channel. Right. And it will purely talk about Bharatiya perspective. Mm. Why is Bharat doing what is doing? Why mm. is Bharat having what it's having? Why is Bharat engaging in what it's engaging? And what is Bharat's position vis-a-vis -vis global issues? I think if we are able to do that and then of course showcase our culture, mm. showcase our, That's very important. Showcase really our important. civilizational uh, heritage, mm. showcase the fact that this is the only landmass across the world where every caste, every creed, every community, every faith a, a, and its firkas, you know, they're all mehfuz. Mm. They're all safe here. Nobody is going to point a gun at you and put a gun to your face and say, no, you can't practice what you're practicing because you've got the freedom to do it. Yes. So freedom in its true sense is in Bharat. Mm. Now, why don't we show it? We need to. Yeah, we have 84,000 dialects. Why don't we talk about those dialects? Yes. We, par badle pani, char par bani is a mm -hmm. So let's show it. Yeah. Let, let's show it. Let's show the, the food. Let's, let's get the world to come to Bharat mm. and somewhere what will also happen is that Bharatiya will start believing themselves a little more and we'll also become a little more open to uh, hosting people, to letting people know who we are and mm. sharing with them in a way that endears us to the world. Mm. I think th that's something which is possible along with of course what private media is doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of private media now is internationally focused okay, uh, and they're all doing it in their own way mm -hmm. and let them do that. Right. That's only going to work as an amplifier mm -hmm. to what, you know, a government initiative would do. I mean, this is purely my personal point of view. Yeah. Right. What do you make of the Ukraine war? Who, where do you think it's going? It's been, what, two years now? More than, it's going to be two years soon? Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think is happening? Why is there no progress? Let's get your views on that. Uh, see, somewhere it's now been blind spotted, right? Mm -hmm. It's falling in the blind spot. It is now, isn't uh, it? It's falling in the blind spot. Mm. Uh, now, somewhere it, one gets the sense that the military industrial complexes are using it to revive their own uh, businesses and their economies at the cost of people. But there's no coming back, there's no redrawing the line, the lines, you know, going back to the old lines. Yeah. The lines have been redrawn. Yes. And both uh, Russia and America, uh, you know, at their own ends are pushing their own agendas. If you really wanted to back Ukraine, you would have backed Ukraine. Now you have sucked Ukraine dry. Yes, you have. Uh, frankly, President Zelensky, for whatever cause he thought is the just cause for the people of Ukraine, he has sunk Ukraine into the kind of debt that's going to take them, you know, half a century, if not more, if not more. to emerge out of. And uh, you have allowed your nation to be behoven to one side or the other mm. on the, at the garb of being neutral yeah. at one side or the other and if you are borderlands and that's the origin of your thing 
then you have to accept that origin and you can't change it. Like yes. You try and change that and that's where the geopolitics comes. My point is, uh, when uh, Russia went to Fiji to sell them missiles, uh, sorry, to Cuba, Cuba. Uh, to sell the missiles, what did America say? They threatened nuclear war. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, now the NATO is right at the doorstep where it can, it's, it's flatlands, the borderlands mm. are flatlands, yep. right? So, you have control over Ukraine, you can train your guns at Russia. Yeah. How is that justified? Mm. See, this is the Western narrative, mm. right? How is that justified? Will you will you be okay? Will we as Bharatiya be okay? Uh, if China was able to steamroll all the way up from, up to the Nepal border and train its guns on us, mm. all across, uh, you know, Himachal, Uttarakhand, UP, Bihar, uh, Sikkim, will we be okay with that? No, it's a red line for us. Yeah. So, we, we will fight that, right? Mm. We, will, we will respond and we will react no matter what it costs. Mm. So, that's exactly what uh, will you allow Iran to walk away, you know, uh, and, and train its guns and uh, say across Pakistan and come there and train their guns on us. Or even will you allow the Pakistanis to do? You will not. You'll, you'll finish them off, right? Mm -hmm. Because you will guard your territory. Yes. So, this has to be understood. So, NATO has to back off. Russia also has to back off. Both will have to back off. The question is who's going to blink because nobody's going to blink. And, and Putin is very clear. He sealed off that route which allows him passage into the warm waters. Mm. The Sea of Azov and uh, the Black Sea. Yeah. These are the two warm water accesses and the ports for Russia's trade. Mm. Otherwise, they are all surrounded all across by frozen ice. seas, yeah. by ice. Yeah. So, if you want a nation to survive, uh, it's, there it's is critical a, for Yeah, hegemonistic character for anybody is wrong. If Chinese hegemonistic character is wrong, then American hegemony is also wrong or mm. Western hegemony is also wrong. Yeah. So, we typically don't see the West as being hegemonic, right? Because Hollywood and all that, they have a very right, nice right. way of spinning narratives. Yeah, they've done it beautifully and mm. now what has happened, they've also succumbed to how the, you know, uh, P CCP and the PLA, mm. they mastered their playbook <laughs> and went into their own home yes. and they have behoved on them. Now, mm. today America is on a 3 trillion, 30 trillion uh, debt, a, a lot of it which is being serviced by… Uh, the military. No. <laughs> Hey, the Chinese, the the China Chinese. <laughs> controls mm. America's They debts. have bought up a lot of the yeah. US debts, so treasuries yeah. and all that. Correct. Yeah. So, so, they cannot, uh, America can't go into an open fight with the they Chinese. They joined at the hip essentially, uh, aren't they? Somewhere they are joined at the hip. Mm. So, they may call each other adversary, but they cannot, they both have been full of each other. Mm. That's how it's happened. Mm. Now, China's credit rating has now been downgraded. Mm. Uh, so, you try to financially weaken a nation to try and subjugate it. And you say that you are fighting communism, hmm. but at the end of the day, what are you doing? You are pushing your own agenda to say that the world will run only by my run. How is it that America as a nation can print dollars at uh, will? At will, yeah. But no other nation can print its hmm. currency at will. Hmm. <laughs> this is not global order. This hmm. is one particular agenda-driven order. It's an empire. Uh, that's how it is. It's an empire. That's I mean, we is. use the term superpower, but that's actually an empire. Yeah. So, what do you think Putin's objectives are? Where do you think he will stop? What does he want to achieve? If you were the Prime Minister of Russia or huh. President of Russia or if you are the Prime Minister of Bharat huh. and you had a similar situation around our borders, hmm. where would you stop? I would want the whole nation back. I mean the whole territory back. Either you want the whole territory back or you want to ensure that there is no more intrusion and there is not a situation where your borders, your people, your country will be under threat. Hmm. That's the simple Russian perspective. That's yeah. the simple Israeli perspective. That's the simple Bharatiya perspective. That we want to secure our borders, not because we want to go and attack the neighbor, but we don't want anybody to attack us. We don't want to get into a situation where our sovereignty, our freedom, our life, our economy is under threat. Mm. And whatever needs to be done to protect it, we'll do it. We'll have to do it. Russia didn't go invading Ukraine or it didn't go invading Poland. It didn't. It didn't go till the time it realized that this entire, uh, that the Americans were going to land in the Black Sea and they're going to patrol those borders. Yes, right. So, this has been brewing since the time the annexation of Crimea happened in yes, 2014. 2014. So, it's been building for a while and yeah. Russia has been telling NATO, don't expand. Have a buffer. Keep mm. the Eastern European nations as a buffer. Mm. Don't align, don't come, don't come close, don't come close. They've been saying it. They've been saying it for 20 years now. So, so who's expanded in the last 20 years? NATO. It's been NATO. Warsaw or NATO? Mm. What do you make of the situation in the Middle East? Always volatile, always in crisis. But now we have the situation going on in Gaza. What do you make of that? What's your analysis? See, uh, there have been in the past Israeli prime ministers who were okay for a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. 
who didn't come at the table to sign the document the palestinians okay yeah there is history which is in favor of the israelis because mm. there was always a kingdom of israel and a kingdom of judah there was no palestine yes but once the israelis and the jews were moved out and they spread across the whole world mm. the palestinians were living there who brought the jews back there at the end of the world war the west yeah so who's created this whole problem it's the west i mean see the straight lines on the maps so <laughs> so who's making the muslims and the jews fight the west hmm. the third of the abrahamic no uh, religions is the one which has created this whole situation now my point is that is the kingdom of israel hmm. it's a place for israelis yes. are they saying palestinians can't live there no they're not saying that but what are they saying that you can't attack our women and children you can't attack our borders and you can't be at war with us hmm. can you live in peace with us yeah. now surrounding israel are all muslim nations yeah why have they not said you come here and you people live here same people arabs Arab. yeah no muslims right mm, co-religionism is what they espouse yeah. they yeah. all espouse co-religionism mm. did they allow rohingyas no did they allow syrians <laughs> they didn't where did they say tum duniya bhar mein chale jao not here ha and we'll pay you money to settle there mm. but don't stay mm. here yeah. why why can't somebody see this mm. is what the israeli uh, what the israeli is doing correct from the palestinian point of view no but uh, are they what they doing correct from the israeli point of view yes palestinians elected the hamas hmm they did uh, how many palestinians have turned around and asked the hamas you have 500 kilometers worth of tunnels israelis are bombing us allow us to hide in the tunnels hmm. what are they said tunnels are only for hamas fighters <laughs> women and children have to die because that helps our story it does yeah it helps us story is not my words mm-hmm. hamas leaders this words i am mm. paraphrasing mm. so the world has to call this out there are 56 nations within the oic organization of islamic uh, nations so, so in that why are these 56 nations not saying it's less than 2 million uh, palestinians we will repatriate them and we will take care of them mm-hmm. they have enough and more land and enough and more money to do that yeah no issue why? there where are the jews staying across is there one country for jews except israel no there's only one they have nowhere else to go yes the israelis and the jews are looking out for their own flock hmm. the muslims are not looking out for their own flock there are so many christian nations okay we don't even have a hindu nation we don't have a hindu nation not one we yeah. had one there are 100 crore hindus on on the face of this earth hmm. give and take a few crore here and there hmm. we don't have a hindu nation yes our hindus are not threatened about their existence hmm. who's being threatened about their existence who's following a doctrine that i've got to wipe all jews on the face of the earth mm. why do they have a doctrine like that and why are they people saying okay it's okay if they have a doctrine like that so if israelis have a doctrine saying that we will not let anybody challenge our sovereignty and we will unite together despite our political differences that's another thing to learn mm. certainly against a common enemy unite against a, uh, the enemy yes present one face learn from the israelis what they're doing they are are they going and in, invading other places they are not they are mm. saying this is my land and i am going to protect it mm. yaar kal ko aapki balcony mein koi aake baith jayega fir pados se aake bolega yaar balcony usko de do de doge kya fir bolega wo balcony se mere ko na mera ek bag mere ko aapke bedroom mein rakhna hai fir wo bolega do bag rakh raha hu char bag rakh raha hu fir aap bologe ye bhai ye do din ke liye bola tha abhi bag hatao ho ye jagah meri hai main nahi jaunga aap dheere dheere aapka pura ghar de doge hm this is a story everywhere no and then the padosi or somebody else will say acha ek kaam karna and that guy says bhai sahab main aapke ghar nahi mere ghar nahi tu wo udhar chale jao main to wo paisa deta hu udhar jaane ke liye hmm. yeah isn't gaza a two state solution i mean they gave the land away to the to the palestinians and they gave them separate administration sovereignty whatever they did implement a two state solution yeah they did they? Yeah. eventually they did yeah but they are not happy they want more they want more they want so the whole now, of israel so, so to now see. the israelis are saying you will have less mm. that that's exactly what's happening mm. so uh, on the one hand the americans and the west is saying well send you humanitarian aid which is going to which is being rediverted towards funding the uh, hamas, hamas war machinery yeah. and then they are saying the israelis will also give you this one mm. so what are they doing can and people are watching this and say ha ye to kara rahe hai par kya hai hmm 
यू नो यू आर ना उगले बनता है ना निगले बनता है यू नो द प्रॉब्लम इज वॉट इज टक इन योर थ्रो बट वॉट यू डू वॉट यू मेक ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट बाई वेरियस यू एस यूनिवर्सिटी हेड्स अबाउट द इजराइल पैलेस ऑफ मैर सी दैट इज समथिंग विच शुड वरी ऑल ऑफ अस अभिजीत वेन द कश्मीरी हिंदू एक्जोडस हैपन डिड दिस इंटेलिजेंस या कम आउट एंड आस्क अ क्वेश्चन नथिंग दे डिट इट गॉट ब्रॉड ब्रश्ड राइट द यजीदीज वर एनाइलेटेड यस डिड दे मेक अ बिग स्टोरी अबाउट इट नथिंग वॉट्स हैपनिंग विद द आर्मेनियंस Are, yep. they, are they saying anything? What is happening in the African nations with what Boko Haram is doing? Mm-hmm. Have they made a hue and cry about it? Nope, uh, it's not happening. So, if th- there is a thought continuum over centuries, that's mm. my personal belief, and I put it out on social media that there is a thought continuum which believes in co-opting, corrupting, infiltrating, and wiping out, and saying. only this thought process think only like this mm. and they they enter into these they seep themselves and and it bites its time mm. they're not in a rush mm. this thought continuum takes its time it may take one year 10 years 100 years across three lifetimes but the message is passed and you see that thought continuum even within bharat mm. which is abhi aapko jo karna hai kar lo हमारा टाइम आएगा तब हम करेंगे दिस थॉट कंटिन्यूम हैज इन्फिल्ट्रेटेड द इंटेलिजेंस ऑफ द अकेडमी आर टूडे टू से यू नो ब्रॉड ब्रश बी अपॉलोजिस अलाउ दिस एवरीथिंग इन द गाब ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन सेशनिस्ट एजेंडा अगेंस्ट नेशन जेनोसाइडल मैसेजिंग अगेंस्ट अ पर्टिकुलर कम्युनिटी और अ नेशन एंड इट्स पीपल और यू नो Um, how do i say empathizing with pan islamist agenda mm-hmm. uh, these are things which should worry we should worry where is this intelligence here questioning the pla about what it's doing in the new territory mm-hmm. that was earlier called east turkestan mm-hmm. now it's called xinjiang xinjiang, xinjiang means a new territory mm-hmm. in chinese lingo itself it's a new territory new territory yes so where is this intelligentsia and academia questioning the pla what about tibet have they ever said the word what about tibet uh, entire demographic genocide that's happening yeah it's already happened in manchuria mm. in inner manchuria the yes. manchus are gone inner mongolia inner mongolia mm. and now uh, uh, this one with mm. tibet it's gone where are these people so these people are uh, paid for hire so so they are uh, they will fire for hire if i pay them at uh, say 200000 dollars or half a million dollars tomorrow and say this is what you got to say they will parrot these lines they will yes so if the intelligence and the top academia is up for sale my question is do we really want to send our children to these uh, studies and it's all happening under the humanities division yes the humanities of course yeah, it's, uh, it's all happening under the humanities division mm. I, i don't know if you've read what rajiv morothra and dr vijay vishwanathan have written in snakes in the ganga mm-hmm. uh, but that book merits some deep introspection and reading by all of us who are parents mm-hmm. all of us mm-hmm. who want a brighter future and a great life for our kids and who believes that if our kids are academically oriented we would want to send them to these top universities right be it within bharat or abroad mm-hmm. but if the academia is being infiltrated and intellectually corrupted yes then we have a problem and that's also because we have been conditioned to believe that the western education system is the best system yes we have been weaned away totally from our you know bharatiya knowledge systems i yes. don't even want to use the term indic i would say bharatiya knowledge systems mm-hmm. we've been moved away from mm-hmm. it so and going back to it for us is going to be very difficult mm. it's going to be very difficult mai aur aap sanskrit mm. padhte nahi hai mai aur mai aur aap hamare bachcho ko kyunki hame nahi sikhaya gaya mm. हम हमारे बच्चों को समझा नहीं सकते कि hmm. पत्ते पे बैठते होकर पत्ते पे बैठ के क्यों खाया जाता है hmm. क्योंकि इससे ज्यादा बायोडिग्रेडेबल कुछ है ही नहीं इन्फेक्शन hmm. पास नहीं होगा hmm. आप आधा पुधा धो के वापस उस थाली को वापस यूज कर रहे हो hmm. उसमें क्या पता कितना साफ हुआ है कितना रह गया कितना डिटर्जेंट आप खा रहे हो आपके खाने के साथ कोई पता hmm. केले का पत्ता है केले का पत्ता आप यूल पुट इट अवे एंड वॉट विल इट इट विल बिकम मेन्यूर एंड विल गो बैक इन टू दॉइल राइट वाई डू पुट वॉटर अराउंड इट 
so that ants don't come into your thing you yeah. got a water barrier mm. to stop ants and smaller insects from getting onto your plate while you're eating or mm. into patta while it these are all things which we don't tell our children yes हम अपने बच्चों को नहीं बताते हैं कि हाथ से खाओ वी आर ट्रेनिंग देम टू ईट विद फोक एंड स्पून एंड नाइफ एक्सेट्रा बट इट्स ओनली वेन यू ईट विद योर हैंड साइंस शोज अस दैट द सेंचुरी यू नो देर इज अ ओरल ओल फैक्ट्री सेंसर्स आर देन ट्रिगर्ड इट रिलीज मोर एंजाइम्स एंड मोर सलाइवा विच हेल्प यू डाइजेस्ट योर फूड एंड इट ऑल्सो गिव्स यू अ सेंस अलॉन्ग विद योर स्टमक अलॉन्ग दैट दैट यू हैड समथिंग इट सेटिस्फाइज यू एट ऑल लेवल्स You respect the food and you enjoy the food like nobody else. Mm-hmm. हर बच्चा देखो हाथ से जब खाता है तो उसको मजा आता है जब बच्चा खाता है वो मजा नहीं आता बट हमने कंडीशन कर दिया बट आई एम जस्ट सेंग दैट वी आर ऑल ओरिएंटेड टू दैट नाउ टू गो बैक टू द वेज विच आर करेक्ट एंड परफेक्टेड इन दिस जनरेशन वो बी वेरी टफ अनलेस वी विलिंगली फोकस आर सेल्स एंड से नो दिस इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू डू and that to expect out of 1.4 billion people is not so easy it's going to take time it's going to take a lot of time we have perpetuated the colonization even after the english left yeah it has and it's happened over generations mm. see the weaning away hasn't happened in one generation time yeah it's happened over three or four generations three or four generations we are now in the our our kids are in the sixth fifth sixth generation mm. six generations is a lot of time to be weaned away yes two generations back converts today mm. with the same uh, hindu surnames have become terrorists <laughs> okay uh, yeah. those who are named after hindu gods today are uh, abusing those very hindu deities and gods mm. and the hindu way mm-hmm. with the same with names of <laughs> hindu deities because that's how they've been weaned away yes you have this entire issue it's been highlighted by the madurai bench of the madras high court of crypto christians uh-huh. where people have hindu names but they have already changed their religion and their faith but they are hiding that identity and hiding that belief mm-hmm. so you feel that what is being done is being done by a hindu but they have actually changed their faith and totally moved away mm-hmm. so that this generation still has a hindu name and they are crypto christians the next generation will be totally weaned away from the hindu way mm-hmm. I don't have anybody's. Uh, I'm not somebody to comment on anybody's personal choice of faith. But if I change change my faith, I'll change it willingly and I'll declare it. I will not hide it. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, the motive is why hide it? Why do they hide it? Why do they hide it? Mm-hmm. Why do they wear kalawa and solicit girls? Mm-hmm. Why do they target Hindu girls and Christian girls while soliciting uh, Hindu and Christian names? Why do they do it? what's the objective mm. the objective is to get be i don't know the objective has to be devious no it's not honorable yes at least that's something which you can say mm-hmm. the objective is not honorable clearly right so what can be done over time to to combat these forces belief in the bhartiya system mm-hmm. belief in the bhartiya way of life belief in the bhartiya perspective and uh, actively batting for that perspective mm-hmm. at at all levels from the grassroots to globally mm-hmm. that's the only way so you you mean bottom and it up has to be done diligently mm-hmm. and it has to be done with the interest of bharat paramount irrespective of which political spectrum one comes from this has to be done diligently this is non negotiable non compromisable mm-hmm. at least for me Right. So the main message is that no matter what your political inclinations or whatever, when it comes to Bharat and putting the Bharatiya perspective to give forward, we have to stick together. Right. We, we we have to have the same same storyboard. See that. See for us, you and me, politically, whatever our beliefs are, samvidhan is the same, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So we need to have a samvidhan for our sanskriti, mm. which talks about what is the Bharatiya way, and that has to be etched, mm. and that is non-negotiable. preserving that propagating that and communicating that has to be a fundamental duty of every bhartiya mm-hmm. that's how we need to change our perspective one of the problems is that we don't have a clear idea of what india is what bharat is everybody talks about the idea of india and everybody has a different idea of india so for some it's india for some it's bharat i think we need the education system or someone somewhere to give us a proper correct perspective of who we are are we a nation state are we a civilization state what exactly is bharat and then we can all come together but. see geographical boundaries also define us yeah spiritual beliefs also define us and our scientific progress mm. and our knowledge systems also define us mm. uh 
फ्रॉम आ सिंधु टू आ सिंधु एज पर द विष्णु पुराणा द डेफिनेशन इज वेरी क्लियर लैंड मास विच इज सराउंडेड बाय वॉटर एंड द माउंटेन थ्री साइड इट्स वॉटर द इंडस ऑन दैट साइड द इंडस रिवर और सरस्वती इट वॉज एट दैट टाइम फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न साइड northern side is the himalayas, himalayas and on three sides it's the bay Oceans. of bengal indian ocean and Ar- uh, arabian sea so let's say the indian ocean so mm. sindhu to sindhu and this landmass has always been there mm. the people living in this landmass are belong to this place mm. and this place was always called bharatvarsha mm. at least for at least 2 to 3000 years before after whatever it was called jambudweepa or different different names you would say but this is bharatvarsha yes now bharatvarsha expanded mm. Bharatvarsha is now contracted mm-hmm. it's only about 60 35% of its actual size in the 1600s or in the 15 16th century it's only 35% of that mm-hmm. but still this is what bharat is mm-hmm. this is geographically we are bharatiya so if our forefathers ancestors have born here then we are bharatiya mm-hmm. secondly all the religions that came from here jainism buddhism uh of various aspects of sanatan prathas yes uh, so beat vaishnav system the shak uh, shaivite system the shakya system all of them one aspect they said is our actions in this life impact our next life mm-hmm. one second they they believed in the concept of the body perishes but the soul or the atma continues to live on yes so the carry forward so mm-hmm. our actions in this year are carry forward as karma phala or residue into the next next birth mm-hmm. and how we are born where we are born what we are born as is impacted but the soul will carry this forward yes so this is the spiritual connect across all the belief systems across that emanated from bharat yes okay belief mm-hmm. systems that this is the second thing that binds us mm-hmm. and the third thing is that we are we are not water that mixes with everything mm-hmm. we are a uh, milk into which sugar can mix itself but if there are stones then the milk will spill mm-hmm. so when the persians were the parsis came at that time to vikramaditya rana that was the message you mix like sugar we'll mix he said i am a jar full of milk is what he said mm-hmm. and he said i'll mix sugar and we'll mix with the society we'll mix with the people like we are mixing uh, milk into sugar sugar mixes in milk mm-hmm. we accept everybody yes. islam came to india at the time of the prophet okay when the prophet was still alive islam had come to bharat uh, one of the first saints soon after jesus christ brought christianity to uh, india in the first century ad so some of the oldest abrahamic religions have already come here more than 2 millennia 2000 years ago mm-hmm. right they all survived here Yes. despite the resistance there was always inclusion mm-hmm. so this is the third aspect of inclusion mm-hmm. the inclusive ethos inclusive hindu ethos and understanding that we belong to this bhubhag which is preserved which is the oldest living civilizations that is what is our identity is and this had huge amount of knowledge systems that when bakhtiyar khilji burnt the nalanda it, it burnt for a year and a half mm-hmm. that was the amount of knowledge that was burnt yeah so those who burn books should they be our ideal or the, and that station is still called bhakti arpur it's still called bhakti imagine and we don't even bother about it mm. so that's what i'm trying to say those who created knowledge those who experimented did research those who did shodh these were they were rishis and munis mm. the the do the, the uh, researchers and the thinkers that's how the names rishi and muni came and anybody who pursued knowledge and research and uh, thought process and philosophy could become a rishi and muni indeed yes so that's that's who we are as a country let's preserve that absolutely that's the essence of being bharatiya yeah. i think we, that's what we need to take take forward and yeah i think that to needs children. to be that not just explain that needs to be crystallized mm. it needs to become like a preamble or a page in our constitution that needs to happen that defines us as yes. who we are as bharatiya yes. and it makes it a fundamental duty for anybody and everybody mm. who's in, who's been given the job of governing this great nation that it is their fundamental duty as gov- as those in governance those in government and also as citizens that this is non negotiable that you have to fulfill this your role as a bharatiya who are you as a bharatiya will be defined and what's your role as a bharatiya should be defined and that needs to be done i don't think it's clearly defined in our samvidhan yet it needs to be done All right, we've discussed a wide range of topics. Thank you so much. It was it was great fun. Thank you. And uh, 
But before we wind up, Abhijit, yeah. I want to ask you. Yes. Why are you doing what you are doing? So let let's turn the roads <laughs> around and let me ask you. I love it. Look, I want to I want people to see a certain perspective. I mm. mean, my perspective, and I think I have a an interesting and unique perspective on the world, on on Bharat, mm. on geopolitics, on history, on science as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that's why I'm doing so it. So when you it. said about doing this, what did people tell you? Did, did they brand you as Sanghi? Did they brand you as <laughs> Modi Media or Godi Media? Did they brand you as somebody who's an agenda? Did they ask you who's funding you? Who <laughs> You should Wrong see my YouTube guy. comments. <laughs> so I'm just asking you. <laughs> so when you see, heard all of this, hmm. what what did you do? Did you first thing, let me not do this, let me no. not get into it? The no. thought didn't occur to me. Hmm. It didn't. I mean, I've got a thick skin. I don't care. Let them say. <laughs> the more the merrier. Come, bring it on. But for every one or two persons who people who would say this, were there 10 people who said, thank you for doing it? Oh, so the the number is unbelievable. unbelievable. Hmm. The number who, the people who, there's always people who are negative in the comments. So I just ignore that. But there's a lot of positivity as well. People are happy. People are grateful. And I am also grateful for them, for to them, for being an audience. So yeah, overall it's very positive. But mm. we do one does get those comments, Sanghi and mm. right wing and whatnot. You know, mm. it's standard stuff. So so do are you doing it just to increase your followers on social media, or is there a plan that Abhijit Chawda has that this is what I want to do next? No, I'm I'm doing this. I'm just uh, enjoying the process. I obviously it's great to have followers on, on social media and all that. I'm not complaining, but the objective is to help people understand the world. I mean, nobody understood geopolitics. Nobody had even un heard of the word geopolitics until like maybe two years ago. Mm. I do understand the world. I've studied a lot of world history. I have traveled as well. So I want this knowledge and this awareness to come into Bharat. Mm. That's what I'm helping doing right now I'm focusing mainly on geopolitics I also speak a lot about history and all that yeah so it's it's about awakening the people and hopefully I'll, I'll play a small part in so that. are you banging your head against a wall or you think you're making a dent I think I'm making a dent mm. I think it's a, it's a, it's going in the right direction yeah yeah, yeah. good fun see that's also fun changing the rules for a change <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do what I also do isn't it? <laughs> lovely 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 so talking lovely. to you thank lovely. you so much thank you thank you so that was the conversation. Hope you liked it. If you enjoyed this, please share this on WhatsApp and other media. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.